I just barely got a look at this, but, and I know I'm going to say it wrong, but Gautam, G-A-U-T-A-M, Adani, he's a very, very wealthy businessman in India who recently, like literally like in the last week or so, like lost like a hundred million dollars worth of life. His name? Oh. No, go ahead. hundred million. How much? How much? Like a hundred, a hundred billion. hundred billion. That was, that was from the company's valuation. And then half of his own wealth which was about 50 billion that he ended up losing um because a wait so let me read the question yeah, what please. do you think about adani losing his wealth mm-hmm. and then what's the who's this other guy is Hind- Hinden- hindenburg is the is the organization that did an investigation into him oh. so hindenburg mm-hmm. is is another uh, uh um company oh. out there a research a research company that uh, deals with uh, um, stock manipulation and money laundering and so forth. And so they did a 100 like page report on his company and how they were doing all these terrible things. And so that helped uh, basically just drop, I mean, plummet the value of of the the stock price for these for this company, the Adani Group, um, which are involved in a lot, a lot of things. It's fascinating. Um, so then he was like um, India's richest man, I'm assuming. Yeah, right? I think, and I think so. he lost a lot of his wealth because Hindenburg did a hit piece on them. Is that what is happening? So, um, ki- yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. seemed like it seemed like it was an investigative, like research thing mm-hmm. that has been labeling, you know, various mm. fraud or crimes that this company has been. Taken part and then the in. question is, what do you think about of Indians getting nationalistic over a billionaire? So, so this is Indians this is are... this is a really interesting aspect of it too, because apparently there's been some decent tie between this individual and his companies and the Modi government, and mm-hmm. there's been some connections in the sense of, you know, a lot of the things that um, his company is very focused on also happen to coincide pretty well with the Modi government's policies agendas. Um, And so there is also this discussion about how, um, you know, right now, basically the, the, the Indian government is, and, and, you know, various actors in the financial system aren't wanting these outside individuals and companies to come in and like boost up the economy. They're wanting, you know, locally grown Indian businessmen, right. As makes sense, right. Like they want, they want their individuals, their people to, you know, raise the raise the finances and economy. Um, and so they had, you know, there had been a lot of discussion around this guy as being like a really, really big deal. And so with all of this coming out, people are questioning as to whether or not the financial system is as good as it is, whether they're, you know, we should have less faith in the Indian financial system kind of in that mm, vein. Okay. It's really yeah, interesting. From- Actually, look at this. Prometheus is saying, take that, Armin. You were so optimistic <laughs> about Modi's economic policies, okay? I was optimistic about India's economy, okay? And this, your comment actually proves my point. How much did you see? You know, so, so look at the way people make conclusions about the general economy is through stories like this, examples, individual stories to make a broader claim about the, the entire economy of a country. How much did you say the guy lost over this whole conspiracy thing? Personally, he lost about 50 billion. The company's valuation was about 100 billion. So lost about, 100 billion. Okay. About 100 billion. How okay. much is India's GDP? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. India's that's GDP is tr- uh, $3 trillion. Yeah, that, okay. is per, that is per... That is... Prometheus, that is per year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Three th- trillion dollars. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry, but I think a hundred billion dollars <laughs> over a company. It's, it's a lot. It feels like, like a lot. It, 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 it is a lot yeah. for a company. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like when it comes to making a, you know, coming coming up with a conclusion about mm-hmm. the general economy of a country that is three trillion trillion dollars i think that's not mm, not a very good way of coming about yeah and that could be one guy and yeah. we'll see if if what we see from this are you know uh, reverberations in the indian economy that starts to put a lot of other things on shaky ground and starts to devalue things it will, in other it will ways, definitely that would be different 
that's that's a good thing. You want things to adjust itself so it can move forward better. Right? Well, yeah. What what I was what I was kind of saying was more along the lines of if this causes a catastrophic fallout from this, then it could be argued that maybe some of those things that were put in place that allowed for these businesses to grow were shaky from the beginning. But right. but like we we didn't end up seeing as big of a um um you know a shake in the chinese economy with the um what was it evergrand or uh, um yes, the whole yes. real estate and stuff like that hasn't shaken out as badly as we thought so this is not for example this is not as bad as the 2008 um no. market crash in the united states right no. and you was like would you come up this is no. would would the 2008 market crash in the united in the united states come lead you to the conclusion that the economy in the United States is not as strong because if you did that you would be very wrong look look at, look at how it recovered so yeah there will be there will be there will be problems there's always problems mm -hmm. with the with mm -hmm. the financial markets okay but that doesn't tell you much about the general health of the economy of a country okay yeah if anything you would be it would be weird if you don't see something like right like this. we saw this in the United States many many times yeah um and it just recovered back right up so there we go. Yeah, and that's that's kind of where I was thinking. We'll have to see where the the fallout actually, you know, where that all kind of shakes out. And um, yeah, this is. But if he defaults on his loans, people have to pay billions to cover it because he was given billions of dollars from government banks. Yeah, again, this will be a crash in the markets, and mm -hmm. uh, the you know this is you know the financial markets what they do and what the economy does is these are just little. You know drops on a graph that and the general trend is going up and up so yeah. when you zoom in you're going to see like boop, coming down but when you zoom out like okay this whole thing is going up 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 okay so that's and, how it works. and again he still you know theoretically is 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 valued at about 50 billion dollars in his personal wealth meaning that if the government of india ultimately goes through some you know legal processes to try and find him guilty for something like fraud or tax evasion or insert thing here well they could require him to pay back that money right and so theoretically yeah again you would see that dip but with the the market and the the law in place that actually does the right thing right well we'll see that increase again like we've seen with cryptocurrency right the first time somebody stole a bunch of crypto years ago like yeah you saw stuff get devalued for a bit but then right after that was corrected and more safeguards were put in place boom it went right back up again even higher so yeah and in fact maybe you this is what you need for your economy to get yeah. healthier yeah. yeah maybe this is a good thing that ultimately causes the indian you know um economy to just boom because now people are are putting more safeguards in place and but, you know n not just market corrections recessions so this mm -hmm, is like mm -hmm. This is far, far less destructive than recession, like a full on yeah. recession, right? But this is just a market correct. This would be something like a market correction, right? But even recessions are actually good and necessary for the economy. So people yeah. are like, oh, our economy is doing wrong, bad. Look at the recession. But like, you actually need that. You actually need that once every seven to 10 years, uh -huh. you know? So if you don't have recessions, the whole process of Darwinism to the market it's not going to happen it's not going to it's not going to go through the pro your um process of cleaning waste mm -hmm. you know so again the way people judge how healthy is an, an economy is is usually very um you know misguided mm -hmm. economy is a complicated thing and people yeah. come up with some very bad conclusions based yeah. on very limited information you know? a lot of people like to think it's a hard science like like you know some of the oh other number go down the, yeah. you know yeah, 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 everything yeah. is bad yeah yeah. yeah 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 make less things terrible make more things good it's like well it's yeah. not that simple <laughs> you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw muhammad hindu goddesses sexy hijabi art jesus mother mary japanese god greek gods and much much more Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.